Midwest? Do you struggle with finding unique, witchy, spooky-like home decor, but you can't find anything because you live in the Midwest, and so anything that is home decor is primitive style? Then welcome to my world, and welcome to this video in which I try to fix my problem. Primitive style is a certain homespun craft farmy style. You walk into any place and you smell scentsy, odds are the stuff they're selling is primitive. I have walked into a craft store and have seen mammy dolls. Because that's how people decorate in the Midwest. And it's terrible and it's awful and I hate it. And so if you want to shop local, support local business, it's kind of hard if your aesthetic isn't racism. <sighs> I'm getting off topic. Ah! No! Yeah. This video is me trying to cover up primitive style of something to create something that actually works for my aesthetic. Let me see that word again. Aesthetic. Let me show you. This. This is not the worst primitive decoration I have ever seen, um, but it definitely has the telltale signs of it. So I'm thinking I can take this guy deconstruct the style a bit, paint him, clean him up, and make him almost look like a spooky, witchy, or maybe even a cottage core style terrarium lantern. I think it's doable. I think it's doable. I feel like I sneak out. Let's make it spooky. And by that, I mean, paint it black, add some moss, and put some mushrooms in this bitch. So let's get this started. Basically, I just want to deconstruct it first and then clean it and then paint it. So I'm going to then remove the glass panels. It's a lot easier to clean those if I take them out. It's also gonna be a lot easier to paint this bad boy with spray paint with the windows removed rather than taping them all up. Once she is all clean, she is ready to be painted, baby. But first, I want to protect the little candlestick inside. So I just got some masking tape, wrapped it around it, made sure nothing was exposed. Because I really don't want to be careful with my spray paint. Because first of all, that's hard. And second of all, I'm lazy. So I don't want to do that. I used the same masking tape to cover up some of the cord too, just in case the spray back of the paint were to hit it. I don't wanna to make too big of a mess with this. I wanna get in and get out with this step. So once it was all protected, it was ready to take outside. I now present to you my Sunday best. Hungover grandpa yelling at kids in his yard. Until I'm so excited. And then I got attacked by a ginormous bug great. I tried to do again a proper technique. I went inside and sprayed a little base coat in there before I did the outside coating. And even though I tried my hardest, I still ended up with drips. I mean, that's just, uh, I don't know what to do. I'm not great with spray paint, but I don't think any acrylic paint was really going to stay on this metal lantern. So I'm just gonna deal with it. After I got a good coat on it, I just let it bake away in the sun and cure in that heat. Here she is, all spray painted away. I put the glass panels back in. And I mean, it's a big improvement from where it was, so I could just leave it like this, but I want it to be a little more spooky. 
sticky. I want it to be a little more special. So I'm going to put a foam piece in the bottom part and then start decorating on top of the foam. That way I can easily change it out if I get tired of it or if I want a less Halloween spooky theme and maybe just more of a basic cottage core nature hobbity theme, I'm gonna make it um, easily removed rather than just gluing everything down to the actual metal. So I'm gonna do that and then replace the bulb with a new one do any little detail touch-ups and this baby's done. So I got this little foam disc in the floral arrangement section of the Dollar Tree, a favorite of mine. And I started by just like poking a hole where the candle was gonna be. And then I ended up just breaking this foam disc down so that it's easier to take in and out, cutting it in half and then cutting it to the shape of the lantern itself but a little bit smaller so that, again, it's very easy to change out. Then comes the magical part. I fill it with moss and that's pretty much it. I end up using a couple different colors of preserved reindeer moss. I really like the texture of it. I like the bright, vivid colors. I use the neon green, purple, and then just a little bit of the like, sandy brown color and I got all the moss from Joanne Fabrics. Basically I just shoved the moss around the foam discs and then on top of the foam disc I used some tacky glue just to keep all the moss in place. It's the safest route to go but then again it keeps everything easily changeable and adaptable for holidays or aesthetics or if you just feel like changing your whole vibe, you know? And here is the lovely look at this giant bed of moss that I've created in this lantern. And honestly, I'd be fine with leaving it just like that, but I want a little bit more. So I'm using these little miniature pumpkins and skulls I got from Joanne Fabrics. I use them in other projects like my mushroom pot and I absolutely love them. They add just a cute little charm and it makes us really feel like a spooky terrarium. I have this fluorite that I put in here. I just really liked that it kind of looked like a tombstone. And that's all I have to say about that. I added a few more little stones. I got like gold stone and avertine in here. Just to make it feel like a little more natural, a little more witchy. And then of course I threw another pumpkin in there because there could never be too many pumpkins. I glued the fluorite down a bit too because he was a little unstable, but other than that, I just needed to pop the light bulb in there and this baby is ready. Was hoping to find a new light bulb that flickers just haven't done that yet and I think I might add a few more things as I shop this Halloween season like maybe a little ghosty or might make a little clay one but other than that I am so happy with how it turned out and I hope you all enjoyed this crafting ride that you took with me and don't forget to subscribe like and or comment even if you hate this let me know, man. Give me all the criticisms. Give me all the hate. I don't care at this point. Check these out. <laughs>